Yo, what's popping guys and welcome to the long awaited new tutorial series. I know I haven't made a tutorial in a while, but we're on a good one now. And uh, I know a lot of people have been wanting this and I've seen it asked. So uh, this video series is going to be on how to make a Five Nights at Freddy's 2 style game. I'm not exactly going to show you word for word, bar for bar, how to create a Five Nights at Freddy's 2 game, but I'm going to create a Five Nights at Freddy's game that shares some very common Five Nights at Freddy's 2 aspects. For example, we have this up over here. Today, we're going to be doing the title screen, but we will be adding title screen, night screen, office, cameras, music box, vent lights, hallway lights, mask, animatronic AI, jump scares, saving, and then for people who are members of the channel, meaning they pay a specific amount of money to get special perks, those people will also get the ability to see Easter eggs, custom night, a world record system, and music and sound effects. I may add more to this list. This is what is guaranteed at the moment, though. So definitely be on the lookout i'm not sure how often i'm going to be posting these i'm going to try to shoot for one episode a, uh, a week so be tuned for that but today we're going to be focusing on the title screen so let's get into that and we start by calling it um i'm gonna call it uh five nights at freddy oh my goodness hello freddy's two tutorial well, i should probably say i should probably say style shouldn't i we should say style we're gonna start we're just gonna get rid of this cat and then we will get right into it so every good title screen has some pretty decent art so we're gonna start just by making some very basic art again uh my art is going to be very sloppy kind of and the only reason for that being is because this is a tutorial and i'm not going for something looking amazing obviously you're going to want to put a lot of work into your art and stuff like that unless the point of your project is for it to not look good so for those of you that haven't seen five nights at freddy's one tutorial um i made the game five nights at uglies so it's only fair if i post five nights at uglies too right yeah exactly so here's generally generally how i go about making a title screen like this so basically i make a background color usually with fnaf it tends to be a, a gray of some sort maybe a little bit darker or something like that Right, you have a darker gray color. And then I like to just make a whole nother one, right? I like to just make a whole nother thing for the character. So for example, let me just draw ugly again. So ugly's gotta look really ugly this time. So obviously spend a lot of time on this, but our ugly character usually looks really gross. So we're gonna have him on like an acid trip this time. He's gonna look very disgusting. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He is not looking too hot, is he? No, he is not. He's had those little nose holes and some complimentary wrinkles. There we go. There we go. So there's his head. And now for his head color, I'm just going to go ahead and grab like this kind of disgusting green looking thing. Yep. We g I think we gave him yellow tea last time. So I'm going to follow suit and do that again. And I gave him these like red like, baked kind of eyes. There he is. Doesn't he look so familiar? Anyways, so let's make his little neck. Not very little. Not very little at all. He needs to have a thick neck. He's got to be thick. You know what I mean? There's his neck. Then I'm just going to quickly extend out his body. Just like this. There we go. And I think his shirt was red in the original, so we might as well continue follow suit with that. Okay, so here's a very basic character. So now what I do is I get Control A to select all, Control C to copy. I'm going to backdrop the original, and paste, and just kind of set him in the corner. Okay, there we go. And now we have where he's going to be sitting. So now what we do is I'm going to duplicate our, our guy, and we're going to add what happens like when he flickers, because most Five Nights at Freddy's things have like this little flicker kind of effect. Right, and you wanna, you want to follow suit in keeping that the case. So maybe we he his his head just turns, maybe his head turns. He goes ksh, ksh. head little kind of snaps off to the side. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna kind of get rid of his head and then paste the one we had. Okay, we're gonna grab his head. <laughs> we grab his head. Did I grab his head? Hey. Control C. Control V. 
Okay, nope, I guess he's having a stroke. Okay, we're gonna copy him like this then. And set his head to tilt off to the other side. There, a very basic flicker. So now what we can do is I'm going to, oh, is my, oh, I think my control key's just stuck. Okay, come into here, paste him. Just get a sideways one. Yep. So I can delete this one. Then we make another backdrop. Whoa, not that. Oh my goodness. Slam on a little background. Take this big boy. Copy. Go ahead and paste him. Just kind of slam him over there. Delete the original. And then we have these frames. See how he bounces around him up and down? Generally, I'd make him not do that. But since it's just tutorial sake, I gotta kind of move. Oh, and then we can't forget to add the text, which everybody knows is by, oh, that's caps lock, five nights at uglies, okay, right here, five nights at uglies, and then for dramatic effect, we're going to make a dark red and go two, oh yes. Oh, so fancy. We'll put it like right. Here. Yeah, we'll put it right here. Five Nights at Ugly's 2. Whoa, crazy. Okay, and then I'm just going to take these. Cap. No, hey, I don't know. Take the. Oh, that's caps lock. That's why. Take these. Copy. Paste. And paste. There we go. So now what we'll do is we will grab a. When I receive green flag, click. This is in the backdrops tab. What I like to do is I like to broadcast a green flag. And the reason we do this is so that we can call upon this broadcast green flag instead of the actual green flag icon. The reason we do that is because if people are running their projects maybe on itch.io or they turn into an exe file and maybe put it on Steam or Game Jolt or something like that, people who are playing those games won't have access to the green flag button. So we can call onto a broadcast instead of the green flag icon to reset everything so that people don't have to close the game and then re-log it. So when I receive a green flag, you should keep this and we'll never use a green flag button again. We're gonna keep using just when I receive green flag from the broadcasts. So when I receive green flag, we will have it instantly switch to backdrop one, which backdrop one is our Twitch or is our standard non twitchy. And now we're going to set up that little flicker. So we're going to have wait a few seconds. Maybe we wait anywhere from pick random, um, maybe five to 12 seconds. Every five to 12 seconds, he'll do his Twitch. So however long you want it to be between intervals of him twitching, this is where you'd set that time. Then what we will do is we will switch the backdrop to two okay we're going to repeat this a few times we're going to repeat this maybe operators and we'll say we'll repeat it six to 15 times we're going to we're going to make him twitch six to 15 times so switch to backdrop two and then we will wait we're going to grab another pick random and we're going to do about 0 0.01 or no here we'll do 0 0.03 to 0 0.05 seconds right for him to then switch to backdrop three and then grab another weight and put it right here. So that it sw switches to the backdrop, waits random seconds, switches to the next backdrop, picks random seconds, and we and it, then it switch back to the second one six to 15 times. And then afterwards, it'll switch it back to backdrop one. And then you will see that gives us this little effect. Actually, we have to, we have to, my goodness, I just realized you made these backdrops. These do not need to be backdrops. These need to be sprites. So the way we fix this, if you've already made them backdrops like I have, is you just take it, hit copy. We're going to slam it in a sprite, hit paste. There we go. Come back to this one. Grab our backdrop to take it, copy it, make a new paint, paste it in there. And then finally for backdrop three, grab it, copy it, make a new costume, slam it in there. And then you can kind of just get rid of these backdrops. Uh, but you always you always need one. Let's leave it blank for now, I guess. And then call this sprite menu. There we go. All right, sorry for that. Um, so let me set that back up again. What am I talking about? I don't need to reset it up because we have it right here. So you can take this, grab it, and hover it over, and let go. Drag them to there. I just kind of do that. And then boom, we have all this goodness. 
Only thing I have to do is change backdrop to a switch costume. So make this a switch costume. Switch costume to costume one. Switch costume to costume two. Do the weight. Oop, not that. This thing. And switch costume to costume three. Weight. Switch costume to costume one. And then we are going to put this in a forever loop just like that. Don't forget to save. Take a look. Click play. You see that he stands up straight. And at random intervals, he will start to do his little twitchy twitch. As you just take a hot look. There's his little twitchy twitch. Then obviously, if you have more frames, you can do it with more frames. But generally, that's what it will look like. Just that nice little, tiny little itty bitty twitching effect. It looks very disgusting and ugly. But that's the point, since that's 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 who he is. He's ugly. He, he's ugly. That's what he is. Let's see if we can get him to do it one more time. Let's see if we can demonstrate it one more time. Do a little twitchy. There he is. Yes. There you go. Now, to add static to our screen. Now, there was a big issue last time. I've seen a lot of comments saying that they had problems with the static. So, I have a static uh, download on my website which you can find in the link in the description. I'll leave a link probably near the top um, of the link where you can download the static. And once you've downloaded the static, um, I'm going to show you how exactly to, to use it, okay? So let me download the static and then I'll, no, no, I'll go through the entire process of downloading the static. So this is my website, all things like, it's very basic. I'm gonna hit on sitemap and we're going to go to down and find scratch garbage and you'll see these scratch tutorial downloads you click on that and you'll find here all of this how to make a fnaf game scratch tutorials you see the static one you click that i'll just leave a link to this page right here but if you want to find it that way then you hit download file uh, it's going to pop up wherever your download is it's going to say that it's done then what you're going to do is hold it let me switch to a display so you can see what i'm doing so right here we have our file explorer and in our downloads you see what we downloaded here this is what you'll get you're going to right click and you're going to hit extract here it's going to do what it does and then you're going to get this little um empty folder you can now delete what you extracted and then inside here you will get all the pngs of your static okay now you'll come to scratch you're going to make yourself a costume call it static and once you're in the costumes tab you're going to come down to here you're going to click upload your costumes to upload you know your costumes and then we're going to hit show all files and then we're going to go to our downloads folder wherever you have this right here you're going to double click on it and then you're going to i don't think you can upload all i'm going to try yeah upload all and then it imports every single um static that i have for you okay off display mode so now that you have your static what we're going to have you do is we will um come to each one well, you don't have to come to each one. So now that you have your static imported, just like that, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a green flag clicked. And we're going to see if when I, receive, when I receive green flag clicked, we're going to show it. Okay, we are going to set its size. Let's check it. Let's say 200 maybe. 200 covers the whole screen. So we'll do set size to 200. And then we will say forever. Go to the front layer. And then we will say next costume. Don't forget to save. Oh, we can't forget one thing, which is setting the ghost effect. So go ahead, set the ghost effect to let's try a 70 and see what it looks like. Don't forget to save. Click. And then boom, you have your static overlay covering and it looks very nice. So for anyone having issues, that's how you do that. That's how you go about importing the static. It's never imported into a backpack. I heard a lot of people thinking that that's what you do is is you put it into a backpack. That that is not the case. Um, I've never. I don't think I remember having you say put them into a backpack. If I did, I'm sorry. But this is generally how you go about putting static into your game. Right. Next is a play button. So let's make a new sprite. We'll call it play button. Okay. I'm gonna do something very basic. Again, I highly suggest you actually. You know, put a decent amount of time into your art, even on the simple things like buttons. As much as you think they wouldn't matter, they do. Some nice UI always goes a long way. So let's say we call this, and we say take this, and we go night, or we just say play. I'll just say play, just as an 
something easy that everyone can recognize very universal if you want to put like night one or something like that go right ahead but boom nice little play button we'll center it perfect so what we'll do now is we will right now just hide the static just for a bit center the play button wherever you'd like it and keep in mind that when we're hovering over it we're going to make it increase in size if you don't want it to increase in size instead of you want to change a costume you can go ahead and do that too i'm going to have it increase in size um, just because I think that that always looks nice. So I'm going to push this in like this so that when it increases in size, I won't cover any text or hit the border. So we will come and grab a when I receive green flag. Again, whenever I say when I receive green flag, we are not going to be using this. We are going to be using our broadcast as per usual. We're going to set the uh, button to go to there. Set its size to 100. And then what we will do is grab a forever because we can't use a um when our, when the sprite is clicked the reason being is because we're going to have this overlay of static that's always on top and since it's on top of the button we'll never actually be able to click the button because we will be clicking the static and you might be wondering why don't you put the static on the front layer or why don't you put the button on the front layer above the static uh, i say no to that because that just never looks good <laughs> I, I promise i promise it does not look good if you want to try it go right ahead i guarantee it doesn't look good but this way will still work so forever we're going to come to control and grab an if else statement and we'll come to sensing and do a mouse pointer if touching mouse pointer we are going to change size by i think four is a good number if you want to mess around and do it you can uh, i think four is super nice and we're going to do an if grab a greater than and we're going to grab the little size bubble in looks so if size is greater than 110 you're going to set the size to 110 or else we're going to change size by negative four if size is less than 100 set size to 100 and what that's going to do oh we forgot to have it show show save and let's see what that does now we have the button we have when we hover over it, it gets big and now it just has this nice little bounce big effect on it that i think looks really nice but now you're wondering how do we get it to broadcast something when you are playing so let's come to the play button underneath this else statement of the mouse pointer we are going to add an if right here mouse down so now we don't have to do if touching mouse pointer because it's already under the condition that you are touching the mouse pointer so if it's touching the mouse pointer and the mouse is down then what we will do is we will broadcast we're going to call it broadcast night screen okay and then we will wait 0.4 we'll say like a 0 0.4 for it now 0 0.4 seconds and then hide you'll see why we have the 0 0.4 when we set up a night screen we're going to do a nice little fade and by the time it fades it'll be completely gone you'll be able to hide so for the time being we won't put that in there and just set it to hide so let's take a look so when we do this all this nice little stuff let's see if we can get uh, if we can get to do some little twitches right now do some little twitch for me boy come on little guy come on little guy do a little twitch little guy come on there you go and now when you press the play button it disappears hence inciting that we started uh the night to broadcast a night screen that's where we're gonna leave this episode we did our title screen so i'm gonna put that in the done category right here just for my sake so thank you guys so much for watching if you liked it then like it and if you didn't like it like it anyways because um, I'm excited for this new series, and I hope you guys are as well. While you're right, I want to subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy my content, then help me out a lot. Uh, while, so while you're down there, you might as well check out my socials. Link in the description. Maybe you'll find something else I do online that you find enjoyable. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.